We want to continue our service in a meaningful, purposeful way that has de demonstrable impacts on this country. And I think some of what you'll hear is what we've been, as an organization, doing to try to do just that. A couple of things about our name itself, Concerned Veterans for America. It is specifically, it says Concerned Veterans for America, but everyone who served knows that no veteran serves alone. And ultimately, every veteran is supported by a family, community members, friends, and others. So while it says veterans, we're an organization of vets, military families, civilian supporters, patriotic Americans who want to come behind the cause. It's also Concerned Veterans for America. It's, we do a lot of work for veterans, and you'll hear about what we've done at the Department of Veterans Affairs, try to hold that department accountable to actually deliver what it says it will to, to veterans and what, what they've earned. But it's not just veterans. Uh, it is for America because we believe you didn't defend the Constitution, you didn't you know, swear an oath to defend the Constitution just to serve other veterans. You did it to defend this precious American experiment, the liberty that we all love and enjoy. And that is why we continue to fight. It's for America. And, and any number of issues, some of which are traditional vets issues, but others which affect the entire over 300 million of Americans uh, and the future of this country that we hand to our kids and, and grandkids. And because that's, I just flew home, flew back onto the tour from Minnesota where I spent a couple days with my two little boys, uh, Gunner and Boone are their names. Gunner's three and Boone is one. And yeah, I call them my little, my little bandits, my little outlaws. Uh, and, and, and we like to say, and I know I've said it too, that I fight or I wear the uniforms that they never do. So they never have to, right? And, and that's, a, that's a very legitimate sentiment. And I've said it and we've all said it because it's what I want. I want to fight so I can create a peaceful world that they can live in. But I also say that knowing I served and they'll probably have to serve too. Because generation, no generation can skip fighting for freedom. It's what Ronald Reagan said it best, uh, you know, it doesn't pass, freedom doesn't pass in the bloodstream. It's only one generation away from extinction. And if one generation grows up thinking it doesn't have to be fought for, then we give it away. We give away this American experiment of freedom and liberty and prosperity that we have. So I hope my kids never have to go to a battlefield. But I, I serve knowing that hopefully they'll be willing in their heart to step up and do it. Or maybe it's not the military, maybe it's another way that they serve this country. But I think what we need to instill in every generation is the willingness to fight. And what we do now will have ramifications for that generation. So as an organization, we decided, hey, we need to take this message to take to the road. And we need to take it out in October of 2013. Uh, why October of 2013? Well, there's no election in November. Uh, that's next year. So it's not, we're not here to help a political candidate or a political party or one side, Republicans or Democrats or others. We thought, what perfect time to hit the road to say, our, our only agenda is the agenda of America, is agenda of freedom. To say, if you want to do more, if you're here looking at the television saying, you know what, I'm ticked off, I, I can't, I'm really frustrated with the direction of this country, we want to be a place where you say, okay, you know what, they're doing something about it. And I want to join up and I want to be a part of what they're fighting for. So we chose October on the calendar because we thought it might be a time and not a whole lot of people are doing this. And then it just so happened, they decided to shut down the government uh, and prove our point at a perfect time. Obviously, that's uh, no, no one wants that. But what you're seeing in Washington and the lack of leadership we're seeing in Washington is precisely the reason why we're, we're, we're holding a tour like this. Because you need more people involved who have know what it means to fight for something higher than themselves or a political party or their own personal gain, who understand what it means to fight for God and country, the Constitution your family, for your community. And I think that's what veterans who have served the cause higher than themselves and their families who serve with them understand. And that's what the Defend Freedom Tour is about. So we've got three taglines of this tour, honor service, defend freedom, and take action. At every stop, we want to honor and recognize the folks that serve. So I want to do that right now. Who here has worn the uniform as a veteran? Raise your hand. Thank you very much for your How about military families, Blue, Blue Star families? How about Gold Star families? Thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. Gold Star wives, Gold Star families, everything. How about civilian supporters who are out here because they believe in it? Thank you. Really, I mean, every, every place we, we see hands going up across the board. Give a round of applause for the military families, Gold Star wives, Blue Star wives.
So we, we, we're out here honoring and recognizing and, and thanking folks for serving, but then we want to talk about what it means to defend freedom. And we know what it means uh, in a context of wearing a uniform. But as an organization, what are we doing about it? Well, one of the things I mentioned briefly was the Department of Veterans Affairs. A department that anyone who's interfaced with it, there, there are some good medical facilities. But as far as the barriers to entry, the difficulties veterans face when they try to apply for the benefits, there's been a lot in the news about it, it's been, it's, uh, and rightfully so. And we'd like to think that our efforts have been a big part of holding VA accountable and forcing them to try to figure out what to do about it. Uh, right now, you're going to wait over 300 days just to get a response if you apply for benefits from the Department of Veterans Affairs. In some urban areas, it's upwards of two years. Now, if they don't, if they don't, if you don't agree with the claim or it doesn't isn't resolved the first time around, and you get put into the appeals backlog, you're waiting upwards of four years, on average, for a response, a response from a bureaucracy so overwhelmed and undercapable that literally we're losing dozens of guys a day uh, to suicide, but also. Losing, losing their lives while waiting on, on, on the benefits that they've earned in this country. Uh, it's, it, it is and should be a national outrage. Uh, and it's the type of thing that veterans who have experienced it can articulate, articulate particularly powerful. VA at the end of the day is a massive bureaucracy. That what we've tried to do year after year after year, and since 2009, the VA's gotten 40% more funding. They're awash in cash, that's not the problem. Now, that's been the problem with politicians for, the, for a long time. Hey, everyone loves the vets, everybody wants to help them. So what do we do? We throw more money at the problem. Throw more money at the problem. Except you're throwing money at a dysfunctional bureaucracy, it doesn't reach the people it's supposed to help. And you don't have enough people that understand that and will hold their feet to the fire. That's why our group has been, and Kat can tell you, we, from, from right here to Washington, D.C., have been at the forefront of doing everything we can to agitate and bring accountability to the Department of Veterans Affairs. Whole, saying that hey, all of this dysfunction, all of these problems, all of this wasted money, loss of lives, and no one's been fired? Yeah. Zero people? None. It's because you, it's almost, I mean, it's almost impossible to hire, to fire an employee at the Department of Veterans Affairs. Almost impossible. And so what we've tried to work with and push is to say, you have to empower a VA secretary or leaders or others to hire and fire good employees. I mean, what does a business do? What does an organization do if you've got dead wood? You get rid of it. Because if you don't, you die. The problem is there's no alternative for veterans. And with a the bureaucracy, they're stuck going there no matter what, and they got bureaucrats sitting there pushing paperwork or stamping denied on claims to push them out the door, and the veterans are the ones that suffer for it. And you've got a lot of leaders that want to do the right thing, but can't, because they're not empowered to do so. So one of the biggest things we're pushing is an accountability of legislation. And the idea, it's just been about starting the idea, now pushing legislation, to hold folks accountable. And we're going to do just that. And Kat can tell you we were standing outside the White House with a bullhorn and a petition, done the old-fashioned way, getting people's signatures on the ground. We got some online too, but most of the old-fashioned way. <clears throat> we delivered it to the gates of the White House with a bullhorn, saying, hey, we're going to be here at 27,000 signatures, we're going to be here at 50,000, 75,000, 100,000, because what do they want? They want us to try one time and then go away. That's what bureaucracies want. And then they want the bad news to go away. So we're not going away, we're going to keep the heat on, we've got some great and powerful allies on the Hill in some of these VA committees that are willing to work with us, and we're going to keep pushing it forward. So what we, we're telling you when we ask you to take action, which is the third part of this, is that we're not just asking for you to come to an event, check us out, hear, some, hear from some great speakers. We want you to roll up your sleeves with us and do something about it. We're going to be aggressive, but we're going to be professional, we're going to be respectful. At the same time, really aggressive, so they cannot ignore you and they know we're not going away. So the Department of Veterans Affairs is, is one example. You've got sequestration and defense spending is another. Anyone who served knows there's fat to be cut 